Hey guys, Frank Cox here, the Barbecue Pit Engineer, and this is the Smoker Builder Channel. Welcome to today's video. On today's video, Aaron and I are gonna cut doors in this tank. We're gonna show you how to mark them out and everything, so stay tuned. All right, you ready? All right, so. So what do you think? I, I think we're going to have to stab these gauges right in the middle of this. I do I mean, too. That, you just can't get over that. Yeah, we're not going to get away from that. So we'll do that. Okay. And, and then uh, so then the, from the center of the seam, we would go out, uh, what, three inches? Yeah. That would be the edge of our door. And then from that seam, you would have to accommodate the entire thing, I guess, if yeah. you want to miss that. Oh, That's right. right. So what do you, what's your take on that? Would you rather have a wider door or deal with drilling through a seam? Um, I'd rather have a, uh, I'd rather not drill through that seam, I yeah. think. <laughs> so, and we know that's about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half. So right. if we maybe just miss that, come in like, what, two inches to yeah, the center? So. And then, because it's a half inch pipe thread uh, size fitting that goes on there. So it would be like an uh, inch and an eighth is what our hole size is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, yeah, here you go. All right, so we're going to come in two. There you go. Now you just got a seat 11 right. 16th. Right there. Well, if you had your glasses on, you could see it. So, we got to do this one now, too. Yep. I'll do the math this time. You want me to do the math this time? Sure, I'll help. You'll help? <laughs> By saying random numbers the whole time I'm trying to count or do the thing. 71 and 3 eighths, that's uh, 34, 30, I can't do that one in my head. 71 and 3 eighths. Yeah, 71 and 3 eighths. 35, 35 and a half, and 3 eighths, 35 and 3 sixteenths. Okay, let me try it. 35 and 3 sixteenths, how many of you guys bet is right or wrong without a calculator? Oh, 35 and 11 sixteenths. Okay. That's what it came up, 71 and 3 eighths, right? I think so. And we're on that. Yeah. 35 and 11 sixteenths. All right. Because we had a half in there for uh, the 71. Oh, yeah, we didn't account yeah. for that. Okay. Yeah. So anyway. That I usually just one. totally guess. And then 35 and 11 sixteenths. Once I flip my tape, I'll, I'll make sure my math's all right. All right, guys, so now we've got our bottom door cut all marked out. The next steps, we're going to use our Kirby ruler here. Now, the thing to remember. Uh, these seams, like these were hopefully square when they were cut and these and these tanks were, these sections of this tank was put together and the heads was put on, but we don't know that for sure. We just got to kind of go with what we think is right, right? And since this is a radius surface, it's really, really hard to just like lay a square up there and check it. So what you can do, there's a couple of different things. I showed in an earlier video on the channel, go way back in the day an approximation of a way to do like a modified three, four, five, kind of a square thing on the door. I don't think you need to go through all of that effort. And truth be told, I do not do that every time. What I actually do is I'll go to the center of this seam right here, and I'll just go with the center of the seam being square. So <clears throat> what I'm gonna do, I've got that mark down here and I gotta transfer it up to my top door cut. And remember one thing, you could, like we said in the other videos, Measure, 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 whatever. Look at it. If it looks wrong, looks trump measurements, right? So always make it look right if it doesn't measure right. In pit building anyway. Okay. That line right there, I'm gonna stand back and look at it. And if I dig it, which I do, I don't know what does the camera think, if you can see it. There you come look, it looks good to me. So now what we're gonna do that we've got this line established, it's in the center of the tank, so it's less likely that we're gonna have scope creep as we come down. Like if we would have made that line down there, by the time we got to that end, it's telephone game. We don't know for real if it was right. So that's, I should have said that, that's the reason why I start in the middle right there. So now we've got that established, now we can go that way with it and we can go back the other way with it. And we don't have to worry about like the doors walking on us. So, ready? Let's do it. Let's go. 
This is nice right now because it's quiet. We can kind of concentrate. <laughs> Sometimes it's really chaotic and you're oh, yeah. doing some layout that you can't mess up. And then some guy over there throwing sparks and raining down on us. We're just so, like a weld and you got to block your eyes. Yeah. Well, there's some pivotal moments to the build where you really got to be on your, on your game. So one more thing you can do here, and I actually think we're going to go back and do that. I, I should have brought it up. Is you should actually with the with the curved ruler like that because it can walk a little bit. If you got your top and bottom, you don't have it squeezed right. It can walk an eighth of an inch. So we're going to go ahead and carry these measurements up to the middle of the door too, just so we have that extra little bit of insurance that our door cut is going to be parallel and perpendicular with our bottom line. Yeah. All right. So just to carry that on through, we're going to go ahead and mark our horizontal lines, and then we can actually step back and see what we're doing before we start cutting. Not quite committed yet. You want to mark these, or you just want to lay, do our layout? I mean, we'll do, our, do our straight edge. We, oh, that's right. I forgot. We'll do the straight edge, which we got to go get that still. Yep. All right, so we got to do the really long cuts now. So these are just big two parallel lines, and... Um, just to keep things nice and streamlined and in line, we're just going to use a big straight edge. And we got some two by two angle here with eighth inch uh, thick. We're going to lay it on the top line and you can fasten this any which way. You can put some screws in there temporarily and plug weld that. You can put the strap on that. Uh, we just like to throw some tacks. We'll tack the ends and tack the middle. And it's just a really small tack on there so you can grind it off and not stress it too much. And that will give us a nice true edge. And then we'll do our first cut on the top. Once all that's top, so it's going to be, we'll start on the door and we're going to leave the corner till the very last. So we'll start here, we'll do a whole cut and we'll stop short of the corner again. Start again, so start, stop, start, stop, start, stop, start, stop, final door leave the corners alone then we're going to take this off we're going to move it to our bottom plane we just cut that line so we'll be able to double check and make sure these are parallel same fashion we're going to tack this in place and do start stop cuts all the way down and once that's done we can remove this straight edge and move to our up and down cuts all right guys so here's kind of the drill uh this is a hypertherm plasma cutter it's the uh 45 XP and uh, it's, it's pretty good color cutter, you know, um, we've got the, the uh, best arc back there we could use. The main difference in the two is the kind of drag uh, consumables we've got. That one has a little wire guard on it and it does kind of tend to get hung up underneath of a situation like this. So I tend to not use that when I'm doing uh, door cuts and stuff. Um, in this case, this drag tip drags up against the edge. This physically contacts the material. There's nothing to get hung up, but you got to be really light on your, you don't want to have like your arms anchored or your hand like dragging like up against, because what will happen is, is that it's going to impede your, your ability to move and cut smoothly. So whenever I'm cutting, what I'll do is I'll start the pilot arc when, when you pull the trigger and then I'll pierce in, but I'll start off of the material. That way I don't like just blow out when that arc is getting started. And as I plunge in, it's like ramping in because the plasma flame coming out, it's really a plasma flame, I guess. The arc is coming out and it's kind of tapered like this. And so if you start off of the material and plunge in, it'll wedge its way in. If you start on the material, it's gonna ignite at the fattest part, which is gonna spread how much of that is piercing in at that point. Plus it's gonna plug your consumables up and you don't want that, that sucks. Yeah. Also, uh, something to consider is direction of your yeah. cut. It's much easier to pull a cut than it is to push a cut. Absolutely. So you constantly, if you'll see us as we do here, it's second nature to us now, but you're generally going to see us pulling a cut. Pulling a cut down, you know, not, not pushing it. Yeah, if we do push, it's for a very short period of time and a very it's, one direction thing. It'll be necessary. Jammed up or something. So. Yeah. But anyway, another thing I do when I'm piercing like that is I tend to not be like at a 90 to the material. I tend to be kind of like pitched a little bit. That way when I come in, it's kind of ramping a little bit. And I'm usually like short, like when I pierce, if my line's right here, I'm not gonna pierce on that line. I'm gonna come back a little bit and, and pierce. That's that like a one inch difference. So that I've got some room to fix that with the grinder. If I'm up in that corner where I pierce, now I've got to plug weld that and I got to get a hacksaw or a sawzall or something fine to get in that corner and clean it up. 
And if you're not comfortable plunging that plasma in there, you can simply put in a small pilot hole and yeah. give that flame somewhere to start and immediately be through the material and then just start cutting yeah, through Yeah, I that. always forget about that. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes... I've pierced so many of these things, it's like, like yeah. you said, second nature. And that's yeah. going to be preference to the person yeah. generating this, so... Yeah. Also, I really have a hard time seeing because I'm getting old and I've been doing this too long. And that's why I usually try not to use my grinder function on my hood. I'm gonna give it a shot, you know, just because I know there's safety police in the comments. What is it, the barbecue pit boys called them Vegematics? These guys is the safety police. Uh-oh. Here we go. Yeah, see, I can't freaking see nothing through that. Pinky Dragon pitched on my cutter. Also, when you pierce like this and you F it all up, you almost need to just make a new hole as close to that as you can because you got all this boogered up material there. You could take a screwdriver or a piece of something on edge like this scraper and try to get rid of that, that'll help. Um, but if you, if you don't get rid of that, you're just gonna wind up fighting. Here we go. And I stopped just a little bit short of my line right there. If you overcut, it's not a huge deal. You can always go back in there and tack weld that shut, but you're gonna to have to use some creative cleanup. One thing we didn't really talk about yet is that we're gonna double cut these lines. And when I double cut, I'm not like cutting another line next to it. I'm actually just gonna change my pitch a little bit. If you noticed, I was really concentrating, just trying to stay 90 degrees to the apex of that radius right there. So what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna come back through that just slightly. Because what'll happen is as this, as you're cutting, like I said, that, that torch, is, that flame is actually tapered. And so what, going down through that 3 eighths of an inch, now 45 XP says it'll sever 5 eighths. But if you like try that, you're gonna wind up with a very tapered cut. And it's not, it's gonna be hard to get this door out of there. Plus we're actually wanting to set our hinges before we cut everything out. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this back through there one more time just to make sure I've got a little bit of that taper out. I'm just barely gonna change my angle, but it should not really uh, affect my kerf on my cut more than just a tiny bit. Here we go. And then once you pierce, just stop what you're doing and clean all that booger weld off there. Just get rid of that. Get it over with. Here we go. One, one more thing to point out, as you'll notice as I'm cutting, I see those little whale spouts come up or I get into a really thick pocket of paint or something like that that I think is inhibiting my cut penetration. What I'll do is I'll just kind of, that's another reason not to have your hands or your elbows or your arms or anything anchored. Because if you're just feeling the edge, like the cutter riding along that line and the inside corner of this touching the, out, the corner there, if you just feel that, then you can kind of just, you're lightweight, you're not putting a lot of pressure down, and you can run that backwards both directions without affecting the lot, your line too much. It's just something I've always just been able to feel, I guess, and, and use. All right, guys, so we got the top door cut done. Now we're going to move this down and cut the bottom cut.